most of her life. Uh, her recent uh, college graduate with a degree in kinesiology and uh, health science from VCU, Virginia Commonwealth University. Yeah. Uh, and she is working with charities such as Save the Children as a fundraiser, and she hopes to get involved in efforts to move Somalia forward. So Wilson is currently working on projects with the Forgotten Minds to help uh, eradicate mental illness from Somalia and undertaking projects to help those who are already making a difference. All right, and for Abia, um, so she's an alumni of Marymount University. Give it up for Marymount, I went there too, <laughs> you know. Uh, she is currently a Fairfax County Public School educator who specializes in special needs programs. She ran a successful campaign in 2016 to have Autism Speaks incorporated in every school in Fairfax County. Her passion for mental health has led her to building a mental hospital in Mogadishu. So, guys, give it up for them. All right. Hello ladies and gentlemen. Hi, my name is Watson. Um, human rights is a very vast and large topic to discuss in five minutes, as we can all agree. Um, we understand that, we at least understand the fundamental values and the basics of human rights. Um, I'm, I'm so happy to be here today. Thank you. I'm, I'm so glad to hear everybody talk about a lot of issues related to human, sorry. But I'm going to go ahead and Sort of, let me just cut through a lot of the stuff that I had planned and ready um, and just kind of get to the meat of it. Um, what we're doing, at least for us, if we, there's a lot of topics. I know a lot of people touched on, um, F, like they touched on FGM, women's rights, um, education. There's so many, like so many things in society that can go under human rights. Um, what we're touching base on is mental health, and I'm glad a lot of people have spoken about it. Um, one of the things, if you think of just a basic form, if if you, sorry, everything's just I just cut. So imagine a, a world where you're chained up and you did nothing wrong. You're um, not considered to be human. You're not part of society. You don't get to make decisions about what, how you live, the way you live, who you get to meet, talk to. You are, that's some basic human rights. You have the right to be free and not chained. Um, we need to address the fact that human beings have the fundamental right to be taken care of, to be heard, to be understood. Um, we need to take care of one another and we need to address it in our community here in the U.S. We need to address it in the diaspora and the stigma and it's take steps to take care, take care of our country. Um, and not just our country, different communities deal with the stigma of mental illness. And the fact that one of the things I've been hearing all, all day were some things like um, support, empathy, um, having a system that, um, and basically leaving places better than you found it. We've noticed that, you know, everybody here is passionate. Like, I came into this not knowing anything. Still, I'm a novice. I don't, can't even touch base on the fun basics of uh, human rights. But it, we all know that we, we have the right to think. We have the right to be human beings and just be respected for that, right? And when somebody does reach out to you, and when people do reach out and say they need help, we have to listen to them, right? Um, every day we're learning, I'm learning something new every single day about what's needed in the community as far as mental health goes, and did not know that this was a big, big topic. And I think one of the sisters um, spoke earlier about not knowing where to start. Um, for the past year, it's been a journey. Um, we've been going up and down, trying to figure out how we can help out. And we found out this stuff is happening in our own families. We found out that mental health is um, an issue that we're all dealing with in one way or another. I know somebody who's dealing with it. Um, and I know time is running really short, but I'll just leave a few little things. Um, we all want to leave a place better than we found it. And I'm seeing here that everybody here has that in common. We all want to leave a, the world a better place. We all want to leave our community you know, impacted. We might not reap the benefits right away. We might not see our communities um, enriched right away, but we know that we're building the fundamental values and we're doing the groundwork and the, the basics, the things that are needed for future generations. Um, this, this war that our country has faced is, is 
has hurt a lot of people. It, not just physically, not just torn families apart, um, emotionally scarred people. Our basic, you know, identity um, is being, it was ripped apart. Um, and we have to take, a, try to stitch it together. Um, this, I can't, this human rights is a very vast topic, you guys, I'm sorry. Like, I don't know where, like, five minutes isn't enough to talk about it, but the fact that we have, um, it leaves, it leaves the people who are voiceless. So a crisis like this that we just dealt, we're dealing with for the past 27 years, is means that the people who didn't have a voice before definitely don't have a voice now. And that's in societies that okay, they don't have a voice. What about like, societies that? Oh, oh, that's okay. But you understand this? I think my five minutes is up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, first of all, I'd like to thank Dr. Saadi Adin for inviting me. I remember the very first time I was here at the Diaspora. And um, I was, what, 20? I was a sophomore in college. Wallahi, I had no, I could barely even put Somalia on the map. You know, I didn't know anything. I didn't care for anything. And after leaving this diaspora, the very next day I called Dr. Saadi Adin, and then I started a nonprofit organization for orphans in Somalia. So it was like, you have to remember, we're here for a reason, and don't just leave here today and just think it's just any of the event that you guys have been to, because I'm sure you go to a million events. When you leave here today, walk out that door, asking yourself, what have I gained from this? What can I do to make someone else's life better? Ultimately, that's why we're here. That's the theme of this whole diaspora, is when you walk out that door, please, you know, come together, do something, whether it's locally, whether it's abroad, that is ultimately, you know, what changed me to get into nonprofits. You know, ever since then, I've been doing, you know, stuff with um, Autism Speaks, and I've been doing stuff back in Somalia, doing orphanages, and all different kinds of activism work because it started from here. The very first diaspora I've been to here, if it wasn't for that, I don't think I'd be, I'll just be like ordinary boring person. That is nothing, you know, with just a degree and a job. But that's, you know, life is far more than that. And um, I just like, I'm glad that Watson talked about mental illness in terms of general. And then Yasmin earlier talked about in terms of general, so I don't have to really get into that. And I, it was sometime in September, I saw Watson just walking by my house. Wallahi, she was just walking by my house. And I just told Watson, you know what? I feel like doing an event on December, you know? And we'll call it like Forgotten Minds. And, and, and we'll just fundraise money and we'll build a hospital in Somalia, you know, for Dr. Habib. Dr. Habib is a close family friend of, of of mine and um, my other Allah yarhamah two of my Abti, one other one Abti both passed away and they were patients of him of his so and she was just she was already doing stuff for the kids of deaf and blind in Somalia and she just kind of dropped everything she was doing and she held on you know went on board with me and so many of you guys came to the event I don't have to get into it we had such an incredible time and 100% of that proceeds if you guys go on our social you know in, in our Instagram so Somalia Forgotten Minds you'll see like the work that's being done and the money that we raised in December and um, it went directly to building a hospital so the f f most of the for first part of the proceeds went to the current facility of Dr. Habib and um, that was a, a nutrition program and then you know beds and that went to things to facilitate the current facility and then the remaining funds went towards um, buying the land and now we're actually in the middle of building the hospital so alhamdulillah it's just it's it's incredible and um, because like I think I'm, I'm personally sick and tired of people just talking 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 like I've I'm always meeting up with my friends. All they're talking about is activism. They're talking about doing this. They're talking about that. I think it's just, you know, when you leave here, I think it's we need less talking and more action. And I think I, I 
I'd rather the same thing with work and meetings. It's like I, it's like meeting after meeting after meeting every week. It's like what are we getting out of it? There's more meetings than actually things being done, and that's I think it's going a lot of that now. There's a lot of organizations as am I that are not doing anything. You know, they're just collecting money from people, and you know, we just have to really start acting and and actions at grassroots projects. And and we're doing another event inshallah in May in Minnesota, and to complete. Um, to complete the uh, the the hospital, and inshallah, we're having we're trying to. It's Somalia, you know. They never tell you anything. It's like when is when is the building going to be done? It's like oh August, oh July. They do never tell you. So inshallah, it's like oh, the the building date. We hope to um, be I don't know sometime in August, and um, and it's going to the current one is a facility. It's underfunded. It's crap. It's, it's there's moles on the walls. So it is going to be the first official hospital mental hospital in Mogadishu so inshallah it's a it's it's a step it's a, it's a step moving forward you know again it goes to less talking more action and that's why I was so glad that Yasmin talked more about the awareness part and so did Warson and I just went directly into the actual project and what's being done so inshallah it will be successful sorry guys Sorry guys, I get emotional, but um, <laughs> so um, the fact that everybody touched base off of some things that we need to do as a community, if you see somebody that's doing something that you like, you know, just offer your time to see if you can support them. If you're good with technology, I'm not good with technology, and I can, you know, say that, but if people who are, if you're good at something, you know, offer your talents, because every, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave everybody a talent. Utilize it in this world, you know, help as many people as you can. Um, usually, I like to always say things like, um, um, I'm, I know for a fact I'm not the, um, uh, most of us, we, in our in uh, any field or given thing, we might not be the brightest color in that field, but we want our colors to accent other colors that are even brighter. And we want to make sure that we leave an impact for other people. Not if we're, Someone was saying this earlier, not everybody can be a leader. Um, not everybody will be a follower. But the thing is, we have to listen to one another and be able to help when we can. Um, not everybody can fit through the store, but we can you know, hear somebody say, tell us how to walk through it properly. We can you know, utilize our skills because I I see some bright bright colors in this room and a lot of colors that can accent those colors as well. So I appreciate you guys taking the time to come out.